Mr. Alvin Franklin, how are you, sir? Hey, man, how you doing, Chris? Doing great, doing great. Uh, this is your one year anniversary, roughly. Are you at Houston, right? Yesterday made one year. Uh, so yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Yep. Okay, let's let's recap your first year in charge. And by the way, make it official. What's your official title at, at UH? Title's kind of long, but it's Senior Associate Athletic Director, and there's a slash, an Executive Director of Development. Which means what, sir? So that means I oversee our fundraising efforts here with, with, with Houston Athletics. Uh, so fundraising from major gifts, annual fund, uh, premium seating, um, and then also really, really now our relationship really with NIL. All right, year one. How would you assess, recap, your first year at UH in that title? Man, honestly, man, it, it's actually was a, was a great year one. Uh, I know we had some transitions in between there with, you know, from football coach to athletic director, chief revenue officer. You know, those are three key transitions that happened during my first year. Uh, but, you know, when I when I took this job, I knew, you know, we, me and you jumped on one of these calls kind of about two weeks in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked about the focus of really, really, you know, capitalizing on the excitement about getting to the Big 12 and getting more and more people involved. Um, you know, this year, you know, we, we closed more major gifts ever, than ever before here. And a major gift here at the University of Houston is qualified as a any commitment of twenty five thousand dollars or more, you know, over a five year period up to up to a five year period. And we, we closed more this year than ever before. And I will tell you, we eclipsed that number, not by, you know, talking to the same people. That's kind of been the message out there is that, you know, we go to the same people. Now we're these, all of these people in this record number, seven figure commitments or, you know, or high six figure commitments, not all of them. You know, we had, you know, I, I really feel like with our constituents and donor base, you know, we have a, a niche and that, our, our, our really soft spot is in this 25000 to to $100,000 range. Now, do we need some people, you know, we know some people are going to fall under there, and we know some there's going to be some people who can do more. But for U of H, for Houston Athletics to really hit, you know, the summit and continue to rise, we have to capitalize on a, a fan base, donor base, constituent base that's really excited right now about being in a Power Four conference, wanting to compete at a high level, that $25,000 to $100,000 range over a five-year period is really where we can really capitalize and build some momentum. And uh, and I'll say this, you know, speaking, I'm not going to speak for you. It all adds up. Okay? It does. It Obviously, does. you'd like to have someone yep. say, Alvin, hey, man, I'm going to give you $25 million. But you'll take the $25 30, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to need, we're gonna need in all transparency, we're going to need some of these, you know, seven, eight figure commitments. We're, we're going to need them going forward. You know, in, in the, you know, the million dollar, court, million dollar question is, is that from individuals? Is it from corporations? Honestly, it's going to need to be both. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just being honest with you, there's going to be there, there needs to be, you know, some synergy and a plan in place. And we, we're, we're, we're getting there, uh, you know, work, you know, how, what is our approach? But honestly, what people have to understand is, you know, I, the word that I don't like is the word just. I can just give this. I can, you know, I'll, I, I, I just, I'm just a $25,000 don't. No, you matter. You're important. And what happens is, you know, you know, you think about, a, you know, you ask yourself, how do you want it? Do you, would you rather close $1 million gift or $10,000 gift to get to a million? And, you know, honestly, the $10,000 gifts are way more you know, impactful because we just tapped into 10 new networks. Right. You know, and so it's, it's, you know, it's for the taking, you know, I think that, you know, um, the excitement is there, you know, we, we have to, you know, the university of Houston, we have alums, you know, not just in town. I know, you know, it's like, you know, in sports, you always say you got to win home first, right. You know, you got, you got to be right, good right. at home. Mm -hmm. We're, we still have some work to do. We, we have to put our arms around the city. We have to. But along those same lines, there's opportunities in Dallas, in Austin, in San Antonio, you know, you know, in other parts. We have alums, a big alumni base in Denver. We have alums in, 
you know, in Phoenix. And I, I'm mentioning those cities because those are cities that we're going to start going to now with the addition of Colorado, the addition of, you know, the, the, the school corner schools, Arizona, Arizona State. And, you know, on the East Coast, we have, we're starting to get more alums, you know, all around the country. And, yes, we got to put our arms around the city, but there are people all over that we've never gotten to. And, and honestly, if there, if there hasn't been a better time, times right now. I don't want to get you in trouble. Okay, okay. so I'm going to try to phrase this more from my perspective <laughs> rather than um, were you surprised at the work ne needed to be done in year one? Honestly, I was not surprised. Uh, and this was not because of the University of Houston. I'll be honest with you, you know, just talking to colleagues, colleagues around the country. Um, a lot of schools are in the same boat. Yes. So we're not an outlier. You know, I think what, what made it tougher than some of our peers right now is we have a we had a three prong problem. And we still kind of we still do. We have we're, we're, we're turning into a two part prong problem. I'll get to that probably later on um, as we continue to talk. But the three when I say three prong problem, we had a you know operation operating budget deficit that we were facing and trying to figure out how to get out of. Then you had a you're trying to build facilities. Mm -hmm. And then also you have um, the, the acronym NIL. And, you know, in a lot of schools. I wouldn't say a lot, but more of your traditional powers have have their facilities are already built mm -hmm. so that they don't even have to address that. Or, you know, then you have some schools where you have facilities already built and their budget is efficient. Right. So you have that, you know, and so now they can put all their eggs in the one basket on NIL. You know what I mean? So there, there's only one ask, you know, like right now you go, for instance, I'm going to use basketball, for example. We have a, you know, to me, the best basketball program in the country. No, we're going to win a national championship here. It's, it's, it's going to happen. Agreed, you know, it's, so. yeah. you know, we're just knocking on the door, knocking on the door. It's going to happen. But when I sit down with someone and say, and they say, well, Alvin, I love Coach Sampson. I want to help men's basketball. How can I help? Well, depends on what you want to do. You, you can get a 50-50 and support, you know, the operating budget for, for men's basketball. Oh, you also – uh can, can help with the Guy V. Lewis renovation on the facility. Oh, or you you can you can help us maintain a championship caliber roster, uh, both from a retention and recruiting standpoint with NIL. Mm -hmm. So if they say, well, Alvin, I only have $10,000 to give you. So now what happens if they say, well, I want to spread it amongst all three of them. Whereas if, you know, now we have the facility, it's done. We've just, uh, we, we've finished the fundraising this, this over the last couple of months for the, renovation of the Gavi uh, Lewis facility, development facility. Yes. So now you take that one off, you know, as we grow into the big 12 and becoming a full share budgetarily, we have no issues, right? We'll have no issues when it comes to the budget. So now it would be one ask, you know, that's, that's, that's been really the challenge that we, we we've kind of had the last, you know, I've been here 12 months, probably 12 to 18 months here is, this puzzle piece of trying to figure out what are, you know, we're trying to put, you know, how does the puzzle piece fit? That's kind of, you know, how I see it. What have you heard from members of Cougar Pride with any of their questions or concerns? Yes. You know, people, people have that, you know, we have to make it cleaner. Um, you know, the, what, what is the message? You know, I think, and that's, that, that falls on, that fall ultimately falls on me of what is the message? And we've been trying to figure out, you know, because really when you roll something out is anything in life. You got one time you, get, you got you got one time to to put it out there. This is the charge. This is the actions, you know, that call to action piece. You, you can only be so loud so many times. And so we really got to really bring that into instead of having 10 to 15 priorities, make it two or three. Make it simple. We got to simplify, you know, simplify our organization. Uh, a little more, um, you know, and, and, and people need to know, hey, where, where is where is the impact that I'm making? No matter what dollar amount you're giving, what is the impact? Because I think that's that's the piece that some people, you know, they, they struggle with is, is my money just going down a black hole? You know, we had to explain it a little better. So.
what are your impressions of Mr. Eddie Nunez so far? Um, juice. I, I think one word, juice. And he has been, you know, Eddie got off the plane uh, last Tuesday night, you know, jumped right into the press conference on Wednesday. And, um, you know, he's been high energy the whole time. You know, you know, some people step into, uh, you know, especially leadership roles. First thing people go is I'm drinking out of a fire hydrant. I'm drinking out of fire hose, right? And it has been, and he is taking, you know, he is taking this really with grace. Uh, I'm here to help. I'm, 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 I'm in it. I'm rolling my sleeves up and getting dirty with you guys. Not well, you know, sometimes in transitions, you know how it is. You, you've seen people go, well, I'm just going to take my time. And it's probably going to take him some, I don't speak for him. It's probably going to take him some time to make some key decisions or, or probably put, you know, after he sees it goes on listening to a learning tour, however he wants to put it to actually put his strategic plan in place. But right now he is like, man, I'm rolling my sleeves up and getting down and getting dirty with you. I was, how can I help? How can I be of help to this organization right now? I think you have you had a new staffer yourself, right? Didn't someone join you recently? Yes, yes. Uh, and that's going to be a part of the evolution of Cougar Pride as, as over the next couple of years. We grow into this thing. I uh, just hired Allie White. Um, Allie uh, joined us from Tulane, um, where she was an assistant AD of Major Gifts there. And she'll be an associate AD of Major Gifts here. And she's going to kind of over, she's going to oversee, not kind of our major gift fundraising strategy and, and really, really hitting the ground running when it comes to us continuing to evolve as a, you know, with major gift fundraising. Uh, that was, it was actually a very fun search. We had some great candidates. It was a true national search. When I look at, you know, we had candidates from Northeast, West coast, you know, South. I mean, they were from everywhere. And so it, this was, this was, you know, we landed on Allie and think she's going to be great. She's very versatile. Uh, before Tulane, she was at Cal Berkeley. Uh, that, that, you know, people go, Alvin, I know you, you were biased. You hired someone for Tulane because of Coach Fritz. Now, that did help um, sure. because she knows Coach Fritz. And she knows really, you know, his, the mantra that he has and, you know, how he does things. But the Cal Berkeley situation really stood out to me because if you're familiar with Cal, they have so many sports. Yes. And they do the kind of what people go with with us with Cougar Pride. You have the sport Pacific giving when he talks about dugout club 50 50 and Cal is structured the same way. And so I that that was really stood up someone who has experience with the same, you know, structure and they have this. They had tradition, the same challenges from a budgetary standpoint in their league. Mm -hmm. So that that was what really stood out to me. Question for you. And I'm, I'm curious, how much did you have uh, in the decision process with the AD search? Had literally none. You know, um, I would, you know, the, the search firm, you know, ran the search, uh, you know, vetted candidates. And then, of course, our upper administration and, you know, it's been said Coach Sampson and Coach Fritz got involved toward the end of it. You know, the only thing that was asked to me, that, that ironically, the search firm who ran the search uh, for Eddie, was also the same search firm that ran the search for me to come here. And so I had familiar, familiarity with the firm. And so I got a phone call from the firm kind of early on and just asked really, you know, about structure, both in the department and kind of some university personnel, how synergy, how people work with one another, things like that. But that was about it. What are some of your goals or your, your main goal for year two for you at Houston? You know, I want us to keep I want number one, I want us to definitely keep building on uh, the new donor piece. Um, you know, the new the new donor piece helps with multiple facets uh, of, of, of the organization. Number one, of course, we raise more money. Right. We raise more money. But also what it does is it, it really helps with the donor for We got to give, you know, our, our larger donors and the people who have been really consistent the last two decades. We got to give them a little break. We got to help them out a little bit. You know, that, you know, stop, you know, and for them, it could be I'm just giving an example. Somebody has been consistently somebody who can give us, you know, commit to a million dollars. Right. You know, we need to be able to say, hey, for right now, you know, I know we, we want to come back to you for two and a half in about six, or seven years. But right now, if you can continue to do half of that. You know that and, and, and that helps, you know, keep us going, keep the momentum going. We got to We got to give them a little break. Um you know, so 
focusing on, you know, continue to bring in new donors. Uh, we really we really have to be more aggressive in the NIL space. And I've said it on here before, you know, we, we this this university has been really, really good, especially when NIL became a thing in the summer of 21 of tapping into the corporate community. Um, but NILs continue to evolve and it, it's no secret. The number continues to go up. You know, yes, that is yes. what it is. But corporate budgets, they're, it, it's, it's kind of in a box, right? Like they they're kind of, you know, this is our marketing budget. This is what this is what mm-hmm. we can do. And they're really, you know, it's a lot of red tape there. And so we've got to continue to get more donors engaged, individuals as well with NIL. Uh, so that's the goal there. Because uh, we got to move, because now the timelines are quick, especially with the way the transfer portal set up, the limited transfer rule, multiple transfer windows. It's becoming a situation where there's got to be more cash available more times a year. And so, you know, really, really, having a a, a strategic plan around how we're going to do that. Um, And another thing, you know, really, really um, being more engaged with the ticket office, you know, the relationship we have, we work with the ticket office hand in hand every, every day. Uh, But really we got new personnel over there right now. How can we continue to grow with what we're doing, what they're doing to continue to drive more butts and seats Get more people at our venues, and not just in football and men's basketball. I think the opportunities here are endless when you talk about, you know, your other sports as well. So our volleyball team, top 15 program in the country. You know, we got to get, you know, baseball is big here in the city of Houston. Right. And we've had baseball success before, you know, so there's no reason, to, you know, with Coach Whitting and what he's doing over there to continue to get more people over there, you know, you know women's basketball. You know, uh, and I look at women's basketball, when you, when you think about Houston, not just University Houston, you know, you think about women's basketball, you go right to the Houston Comets. Yes, this sir. city has rallied behind that sport before, and it can again. Um, and then softball is one of the fastest growing sports in the country right now. And then we have other sports, soccer, try, I mean, we host track meets. We just got to continue to work together to drive more and more people to our campus for all of our sports. I know your time is short. But real quick, last question for you. After the football ops building is complete, what are the next projects coming up? Nothing really major. You know, that that's kind of a TBD, you know, because honestly, we, you know, capital projects really fall under the priorities of the of the leader. You know what I mean? And so right now with Eddie just getting here, you know, he may, you know, there could be something that he's eyeing, something that we think is really, really efficient space. And he may say, I think it needs some more work or it needs an enhancement. You know, I I can honestly say I don't see I don't foresee right now a new construction project after uh, we're done with the football operations center in the the near future. But I can I can I can see a couple of renovations depending on, you know, the priorities that he has in place in his mind. All right, my man. Thank you, as always, for taking time out of your schedule to join me here on the takeover. Keep in touch. And as always, if you have something you want to share with the me and the audience, just let me know, and you can come out and do it again. Man, Chris, we appreciate you, man. You know, any, any, uh, you know what you do for Houston Athletics, always being present, you know, showing up, you know, speaking positivity about the cool it means a lot. Thank you, man. You take care. Alvin Franklin. Yeah. All right, that was Alvin Franklin, the UH Senior Associate Athletics Director for Development slash Executive Director of Development. Hope you enjoyed that.